Funding for Firehouse Kitchen is brought to you by Resorts World Casino in Queens, New York. Over 5,000 games just minutes away. Shallon Self-Defense Center. Classes for men, women, and children. Kick with the best. Fire News. Serving heroes since 1973. Gentle Dental. In a relaxed, friendly atmosphere located in Eastport, New York. Rene Dumang. Fine jewelry in East Islip, New York. And DiCarlo Food Service, serving quality restaurants located in Holtzville, New York. Firehouse Kitchen, we are cooking with Anthony Sino. We had him on last season, he's our prep chef. He's also my wife's father, and I kind of promised him he could be on the show again. So, we're gonna have him today on Firehouse Kitchen, and we're gonna make some great, great food with Anthony Sino. Let's get ready to start cooking. Well, we got another episode of Firehouse Kitchen here, and I am happy to say I'm cooking with my father-in-law, Anthony, again. Give me a hug, Dad. Love you. Very nice. <laughs> Love having you on the show. Love being here. One thing that is great about having Anthony on the show is, uh, or Dad, I'm gonna call him Dad and Anthony on the whole show, um, is he is very articulate. He explains everything that he's doing. He's got great stories. I usually have to pull the stories out of the fireman or I have to pull the stories out, but Anthony has no problem talking on camera, so I'm gonna ask him and he's gonna go. What are we making today, Dad? We're making meatballs, Brooklyn style, Meatballs. I grew up in South Brooklyn. It's known as Park Slope today. It's still known as South Brooklyn. And growing up, it was not uncommon. On Sunday mornings, my mom would be making the sauce, and she'd always be invariably frying some meatballs. So to have meatballs for breakfast at 7.30 a.m. on a Sunday morning, incredible. I know you're saying, wow, eggs, pancake, waffles. You haven't lived till you had fried meatballs right out of the pan on a Sunday morning, prior to our sit-down pasta. Well, I'll eat meatballs, there's cold meatballs in the fridge, I'll eat them sometimes for breakfast. Oh, yeah. But never, never, my, well, my, I grew up in an Irish household, like, so, you know, so I guess potatoes is what we would have, I guess, but, uh... Well, I love, but, um, uh... I know, I know you, like, you like all the, the Irish cooking, but yeah. no, never, I've never even, it's the first I've heard of meatballs for breakfast. Well, you awesome. know what, Shepherd's Pie has meat in it. Shepherd's Ooh. Pie has vegetables in it, so I love love shepherd's pie it's a one meal kind of thing okay. but there are so many variations of meatballs you got asian meatballs you've got italian meatballs polish meatballs this is very very basic i try to keep it very simple because growing up uh, my family was very basic uh, as i said this in a prior show we would have a produce wagon horse and wagon i'm really dating myself come down the street uh, and he'd be yelling all kinds of escaro spinach and we would run down they would weigh it we would pet the horse, I'm really going back, and um, we had all fresh vegetables then. Today, because of uh, the time limitations, we uh, now rely heavily on dry seasoning, which is fine, but I try to keep it very basic. Parsley, basil, garlic, salt, pepper, cheese, uh, some breadcrumbs, basic stuff that everybody has in their pantry. You can go and you can change up or kick it up a notch, uh, by putting in pork, lamb, uh, and chopped meat uh, as a mixture. You could do that as a meatloaf, but I'm trying to keep it simple again today. Yeah, Lori, your daughter, makes unbelievable, my wife, Lori, mm -hmm. um, unbelievable meatball, and she uses the uh, meatloaf mix when she uses mm -hmm. when she, meets, mm -hmm. she makes a meatball, and she loves the, um, uh, what is it, the... Uh, it's usually pork, veal, and... and yeah, veal. Yeah, yeah that veal. kind yeah, of mix. Yeah, she pushes right, it to, like, right, the right. chopped meat. Well, my wife's an unbelievable cook, and whole of her daughter just 
pick it right up from her. They all have their own little style. Yes. Like uh, all my, my daughters. Wife's a very good cook. Like all my grandchildren, <laughs> my three grandchildren right here in this particular household, I have eight. Uh, they're all unbelievable eaters, and, they, and they're blessed to be able to taste everything and really enjoy everything. And that's really important. Today, everybody's on the go. Nobody sits down and eats together anymore. So, we, so we, we, we try. We, uh, at the weekends, yeah. we do. Yeah. Well, my yeah. wife and I love cooking, as a matter of fact, and I'm digressing for one second. We made our first, there to say, uh, they call it a pizza rustica. It's a meat pie for Easter, and it came out unbelievable. We also made honey balls, which is known as struffles. When the two of us in the kitchen is magic. Mm -hmm. uh, well, that, we, that, that, that pizza rustica, that pizza rustica oh. that you made was unbelievable. Well, that, that'll kill that, you. That was like, a, it's like, it's, it's almost like a, it almost looks like yeah, a souffle. Yeah, it's no, not a souffle, it's, um, a quiche. Yeah, but it's a big quiche. It it's a big like quiche. A pie, and then we did the, uh, the strip, so it, looked, it could have been an apple pie. Yeah, so I knew, but it was really, really good. It ruined my Easter. Well, when, when I say it ruined my Easter, it ruined my Easter dinner, because I ate like two pounds of that before, yeah. and I was done. It was delicious. It, was it really, really was. Cool. Uh, well, we, we're limited in time, so I've already cut some zucchinis, red skin potatoes, leaving the skin on, and some bell peppers. I use red and orange. The deeper the color, the more antioxidant it has. Plus, they taste good. It's funny, but children will eat raw vegetables before they'll eat cooked vegetables. Mm -hmm. But this is gonna be a sauteed quick in some olive oil. I'm gonna just turn the heat up here. See, I didn't know that. I thought the peppers were just, uh, I thought it was just for color, the no, different no, no, colors. No, the darker the color than anything. Raspberries, yeah. strawberries, blackberries, blueberries. Darker the color, the healthier for you. Very um, nice. So, while that's heating up, uh, we're gonna start to mix my meat. Uh, actually, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm going to let this heat up a little quicker. It's okay. gonna take a little bit of time. I'm gonna pour some oil in this here skillet so that we can start sauteing these the vegetables. All right, I already seasoned that pot prior to the show. So okay. let's just turn the heat up a bit here. And I'm gonna put these vegetables in. We can start stuffing them around. Maybe I'll have my son all array. Take care of this here. Wow, oh, it's gonna give me a job today. I'm very happy. Now this again is just, okay. like I said, uh, the recipe and all the ingredients will be on the website. But that again is thin sliced zucchini, thin sliced red peppers. So I'm gonna keep stirring and, this up? Well, you can just mix it around a little bit, Tim. All right. Uh, and then yeah. I'll add some salt in a little while. Okay. Uh, for the meatballs, we're going to use all of these ingredients to some degree. Again, the ingredients are all on the website, and it's all according to taste. You could put a little bit more cheese, a little bit more basil, a little bit more um, parsley. It's a matter of feel, and I'll explain that as we go along. First thing I'm gonna do is crack three eggs into a pound of chopped meat, and you can just approximate, if it's a pound and a half, four eggs. Uh, it's three, four eggs. Once again, I'm gonna talk about this as we go forward. The more eggs, the more moisture. The, the more Sorry. eggs, and that's what it's all about. It's all about moisture. You, I like my meatballs. My wife and I love our meatballs, so that when you, if you were to put it in a hero, just by pushing down on the meatball, it actually just falls apart. Not something that's heavy. And you're gonna see in a second that my meatballs are not meat Ball. They are flattened ever so gently. Again, another trick that my mom and dad would do. And I believe they did that, because uh, I just ate them, uh, as a means of having more surface area cooking. When it's a ball, there's less area in the frying pan, and as a result, it doesn't cook the way a little flattened meat ball would go. So into this, I put three eggs, I pounded chopped meat. Again, I'm gonna put maybe about a half a cup of breadcrumbs. Again, my mom and dad, they would have used white bread. They would have soaked it, literally soaked it, wrung it out, and put it in. Today, we I don't use white bread in my house at all. We always use a whole wheat bread. So we, we've now, I'm using here um, Italian seasoned breadcrumbs, which again, it seems to mix a little bit nicer. It's more fluid, it blends in nicer. Not to say anything about the people that my mom made with the bread, but again, we don't have white bread. Didn't they use like stale bread? You had stale bread, you could use you that, because you soak it down. That's generally what they so you didn't did throw, You didn't throw yep. anything away. Yep. There's Italian no waste. Bread. No Literally waste. put it under the sink, you squeeze it out, and you put it in, but it was wumble. Uh, just, just beautiful. I'm gonna put a little bit of cheese. Again, the recipe is gonna be on the website. And as I start to mix this, if it seems a little too dry, I'll add another egg. Um, I'm gonna put parsley as my favorite, so I put quite a bit of parsley. Yeah, I like parsley very much. A pinch of 
basil. Pinch of basil. All right. I'm gonna put just a pinch of, of black pepper, and I'm not gonna put any salt. Uh, again, that's because I have the cheese, which has salt. You were big on growing. Didn't you grow basil on your fire escape? Yeah, I still do. I still do. Basil on, on a fire escape, oh my god. We had a fire escape in the back of our house. We live in a three-story walk-up. Uh, actually, a two-story walk-up. I'm still listening which, upstairs. Which, I'm still which, listening. Is, which, is now, which is now a brownstone. Call it a brownstone now. Then it was just a two-story walk-up, cold water, flat. And pardon me if I said this in my last episode, but no one really understands what a cold water flat is. Literally, a cold water flat is no heat. Railroad rooms, one room right after the other, uh, and the only room that really had heat contradict myself as a kerosene stove that we had with the wick that my dad would have to go out, uh, fill up, light the wick, and it was vented to a fireplace. So you didn't have cold, you didn't have hot water in the, in the, in the house? You had hot water heater in the kitchen. In the kitchen. But all the rooms, the bedrooms, the um, bathroom, no heat. No heat. Zero heat. It gets, it gets cold in Brooklyn. It's amazing. <laughs> well, anyway, so we got our eggs, we got our cheese, we got our parsley, we got our basil, we got our pepper. Everything that we need to put in here right now is here, with the, with the exception of salt, which you don't need. Okay. Uh, you can always add that later on. So, my hands are clean. He washed them I before washed the them show. Before, and I I'm saw wash them again afterwards. Uh, so, I'm going to start to mix this just to see what kind of a consistency we have and how much we should be adding to it if we need more. Okay. That would be breadcrumbs, eggs. Yeah, and this is a nice mixture. So I'm gonna mix this here, I'm gonna add a little bit more breadcrumbs. I'm gonna ask my son-in-law, who I love dearly, who I know since he's 14. I've already got a good job. To, to go over to the saute vegetables and take a nice couple of pinches of garlic, a couple okay. of pinches of pepper, and maybe three or four of salt. Got okay, a couple pinches, okay, couple, yep. couple, got Pinches, it. pinches, pinches, and then mix it around. All right, so I'm gonna get a pinch of pepper. Yeah, this is really, really, really nice. Garlic, I like garlic. Total, total amount of breadcrumbs is probably about a cup. And some salt. And last but not least. All pinched up. Last but away. not least, we're going to put in some garlic cloves. I like fresh garlic. Again, the recipes are on. The ingredients and the amount is on the website, will be on the website. And again, it's all a matter of what you like. I grew up with food today that you pay a small fortune for. Uh, you get a dish of pasta at a nice restaurant, and it's a small fortune. It's $18, $19 a plate. We didn't realize how lucky it is when my mom would have made um, a spaghetti with broccoli raw, which is an Italian broccoli, or an escarole and bean soup, which is basic peasant food. But we grew up on that, and I think that's why uh, we remain so healthy or we're able to fight off certain illnesses with the exception of um, having some help from God. Once again, my wife, incredible. My wife was 19, I was 21. We got married both young and foolish, but thank God it lasted and it's, it's approaching 50 years, actually 48 years. Well, I'm very so thankful. I love you, hon. Uh, I'm very thankful because would, you wouldn't have your daughter then. Well. My wonderful wife. Now I'm going to start forming meatballs. Meatballs, you're gonna see. Maybe we'll get about, well, it's hard to tell. I like the big chunks of garlic. Oh, yeah. It's awesome. Oh, yeah. You have to taste it. I don't know if any of you have had a chance to go down to Little Italy, um, but a lot of the food that they cook in Little Italy is really, really lush. It's just delicious. And you'll notice big chunks of garlic and everything that they make, if they make a pasta, the red sauce has chunks of, of tomato. It's just reminiscent of the way things used to be. Well, I know we uh, love the restaurant uh, Pellegrino's. Oh, yeah. El, what is it, Deni and Danico's? And Danico's, mm -hmm. and El Palazzo. Mm -hmm. um, there's quite a few uh, restaurants there. Unfortunately, yes. I'm cooking, I'm not really thinking. So I'm gonna put this last meatball in right here. We have a few more we're gonna be making, but I wanna go wash my hands after I place these meatballs into the frying pan. Okay, so, place them in. Follow me over. And you know what we need, Ray? We need a little bit more oil in this pan. Let's see. Okay, a little bit of love, a little bit of oil. I like the oil. I like it. Good. Okay. You want to put enough oil so that when you put the meatball in, it's about 
the oil comes up to about half of the meat roll. Thereby, when I flip it over, both sides get pretty much cooked evenly. All right, so he's putting them in, and you're gonna start smashing them down. Well, I'm gonna flatten them down just a little bit, just a little bit. He's gonna make much. them into like little hockey pucks. Mm -hmm. I think I said that, I was at his daughter Melissa's house, and she brought her meatballs, and I said, they look like hockey pucks. They were delicious, but they looked just like hockey pucks, because they're nice and flat. All right, he's flattening them out. Now, we're gonna cook those up. You gotta wash your hands. Yep. Um, why don't we go to a fire fact right now, and we'll be right back. Hi, I'm Firefighter Ray, and I'm here with the Green Lawn Fire Department to give you a fire fact. Today's fire fact is the partner saw. Now, the partner saw can cut through just about anything. It all depends on the blade that we use. This right here is a metal cutting blade. We might have to cut the Bilco doors off of the basement if there's a fire in the basement. The storefront, we might have to cut open if anything that's locked up with metal, this bad boy will get through. We also have all different kinds. We have a cement cutting blade, and also we have our wood cutting blade, ultimately used in a roof. We cut a seven, nine, eight cut. That lets us vent the roof. We open the roof, it lets the heat out, lets all the smoke out, gives relief to those firefighters in the fire. These are our wood cutting blades. This bad boy can cut through anything. I'm Firefighter Ray, this is the partner saw, and this is my fire fact. All right, the meatballs are cooking, your hands are clean. Nice and clean. Uh, how many more minutes? A couple uh, more minutes. A couple uh, minutes, okay. Gonna, after the paper towels here, we're gonna put that in here, the meatballs in here, just to sort of absorb any excess oil, and then we'll plate our vegetables as well, and then we'll give it a taste. All right, so it smells delicious. Uh, I love, uh, you get me talking about Brooklyn, I was talking about it before, growing up, uh, as I said, we live in the brownstone, cold water flat, uh, down from Park Slope, South Brooklyn, as it's known today, or it was then. Uh, and there was a fire escape that we had, literally, to escape a fire. And uh, I think about it today, how crazy things are today, and how gentler they were then. Uh, we used to play out on the fire escape. We would climb through the kitchen window. My mom would have us sit out there on a summer day, and yeah, she did love us. Uh, there was no danger involved, and we used to have our lunch out there, and we'd have Kool-Aid. Actually, we didn't have Kool-Aid, we had lemonade. Fresh lemonade, fresh orange aid. Uh, it was a different day, a different time. There wasn't any charge to watch TV. There was simply an antenna that we used to point towards the Empire State Building to get the best reception. We had channel two, four, five, seven, nine, eleven, and thirteen. We had Death Valley Days, it was all your cowboy shows on channel 13. We had Felix the Cat in black and white. We were fortunate that we had a TV. Matter of fact, my dad, may he rest, uh, as a side job to bring in some additional money, uh, used to repair TVs. And I used to sit there with a little tube tester and put tubes in, watch them go on, put this little clip on top, put, run the certain numbers for that particular tube. Yeah, I know, Dad, you're listening. And he would say to me, Anthony, is that good or is it bad? And I'd watch the meter. And, no, that's no good, Dad. And we dumped that one in. And it was a way to make a few dollars. As I try to explain this to my children, grandchildren, to bring them back to a gentler time, in my mind, I'm going back five decades. In their mind, they're saying, what the heck is he talking about? Um, I mean, I consider myself somewhat savvy today, even in, due to the fact that I have to be, uh, but I'm not pleased with it. But I have the latest electronic phones and computers and desktops and all of the various websites. Um, and they do that so that I stay in touch and stay in tune with my grandchildren and I know what they're talking about. As a matter of fact, I've assisted them on occasion. And it doesn't remove the fact that my roots were in a more gentler time. Mm. But be that well, now we're, we're reminiscing with the old. Let's see if we can taste one of these old recipes. We're going to bring, we're going to plate the, uh, we're going to go back and take these sauteed sort of vegetables. We're going to plate that. Okay. And then we're going to, first we'll take our meatballs out, I think, okay. just so, so we can give it a chance out. to. So if you want to shut the. All right, heat's uh, off. Yeah, heat's off. Okay. There we go. All right. Got meatballs okay. on the plate. They look good, Dad. Oh, yeah. And they'll taste good. A little bit like hockey pucks, but uh, no, they do. Now keep in mind, this is a pound. And so we've got ourselves about, I'm not counting, maybe about nine or ten here. Okay. Okay. Very nice. Like that. Mm -hmm. I might just put a little mm -hmm. of parsley. Should I bring the vegetables over? Yeah, why not? All right. Bring these bad boys over. Oh, let's that. just we have this. Yeah, sure. And we'll just. Oh, this looks good. This looks really good. 
It smells amazing. So once again, this is going to reduce. Don't fret if you think you have too much and never have enough. You okay. know? All right, well, let's try plating this, all right, Sam? We'll put a few meatballs on each plate. You okay. Let me just put this here. We will take one meatball, two meatballs, three meatballs. Very nice. And let me just put some of, uh, you could pick that up for me, Sam? Sure. You okay? A little bit of veggies. Some vegetables. Some meat and vegetables. Okay. Very nice. That's for you. One, two, three. Mine are a little small, so I'm gonna have four. How do you oh. like that? Oh yeah. And I'll probably be eating four too. And now this was one full zucchini. This smells two, unbelievable. Two red, I'm sorry, two peppers, one green, again, one orange, that's fine. Okay. Put this back in here. All right, like so a little, a little seasoning. A little seasoning. A little bit of love. Just a little bit of parsley, a little bit of basil. Mm -hmm. And we are just about ready to go. Is ready to eat. All right, let's clean up. It all looks so delicious. Uh, let's go to a fire safety tip right now, and we'll be right back. Hi, I'm Firefighter Ray, and today's safety tip has to do with the car extrication. Now, we got a jolt team cutting a car up behind us, or if you're in a real life car extrication, Always wear your safety gloves, okay? Now, these are Hex Armor extrication gloves. They got little bone, little piece of rubber to mimic your bones in case stuff falls on it. Looks like I have skeleton hands. It's also got nice thick leather on the front. Great gloves, works great in an extrication, okay? Because there's lots of sharp metal and sharp glass when you're doing that extrication. So whenever you're using the hearse tool, whenever we're doing an extrication drill, always wear your gloves. I'm Firefighter Ray, and these tips save lives. Looks delicious, Dad. Thank you. Let's try it out. Great. All right. Notice just... the meatballs are not all the same size. Again, it's very, yeah. very rustic. And you really should I'm not right in the middle. You don't even need a fork. You don't even need a fork. Yeah, you don't need a fork. Mm. Mm. Taste how crispy it is. Oh, my God. Oh, baby, that is delicious. I love the garlic. Now, back in Brooklyn, mm. this is the way we would eat it. I added a frying pan. It was a little cool. Mm. See that garlic? Oh. Just straight meat. Mom, Ooh. my God. Dad, delicious. No, they always. Again, my wife, the two of us cooking together, she just, I don't know what she does, everything she does. We have our own style, and it's incredible. So, when two of us like to cook, it's just a great, I said this before, a great combination, and everything is just so easy. If you like what you're doing, there's no labor to it. Oh. Mm. And uh, you know they're not they're not huge. You know they're mm. mm -mm -mm. everything today you ever you know it's like, you, know, you go to some of these restaurants and you get these giant meatballs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I think if you keep them small like this, mm. they cook perfectly. Uh, they always tell me I got to slow down when we do um, when I do the taste on the show because I eat too much. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm doing that right now. I'm eating too much again. Well, yeah. I mean, I, four, meat, four meatballs is, is really nothing. Mm. But keep in mind that was ten or eleven meatballs. And that was a half a pound. So 16 ounces to a pound, each more, each meatball is maybe about an ounce and a half, somewhere around there. So if you eat three meatballs, it's like four and a half ounces. Listen to me doing the math. So it's four and a half ounces, but there's garlic, and there's parsley, and there's cheese. And it's a very, very healthy, and you blot the oil. If you're using any kind of uh, smart, healthy oil, olive oil, uh, it's all very, very healthy. Well, well, Dad, I hope you keep uh, coming on Firehouse Kitchen because we love having you. Hi. I think we should do a show called Little Anthony's Kitchen, and it'll just be you. I don't know. Oh, yeah, I, know I said little. But uh, it'll just be you cooking and talking and sharing. I think that would be a great show. Love it. Um, love it, love it, love it. To find out more about Firehouse Kitchen, go to firehousekitchenshow.com. You can find out how to donate to the burn centers, to the Ice of Town Fire Museum. Also, you can friend us on Facebook. If you want to be on Firehouse Kitchen, let us know. Email us, okay? And you'll find our email right on firehousekitchenshow.com. Well, Dad, thank you for coming on again. <laughs> Love you. That's it. Thank and you. I will see you next time on Firehouse Kitchen. All right. Very good. I'm going to finish these meatballs now. Sounds good to All me. All the portion control. Oh, my gosh.
Funding for Firehouse Kitchen is brought to you by Resorts World Casino in Queens, New York. Over 5,000 games just minutes away. Shallon Self Defense Center. Classes for men, women, and children. Kick with the best. Fire News. Serving heroes since 1973. Gentle Dental. In a relaxed, friendly atmosphere located in Eastport, New York. Rene Dumang. Fine jewelry in East Islip, New York. And DiCarlo Food Service. Serving quality restaurants located in Holtzville, New York. Now you can enjoy Firehouse Kitchen at your own leisure with Firehouse Kitchen DVDs. Rewatch your favorite recipes and stories with this DVD collection. 